Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this particular lecture, I am going to talk about action potential of cell membrane. So when you put an electrode through the membrane, we are going to observe a voltage gradient across the membrane and that voltage in the resting state of the cell is minus 70 millivolt. That is known as resting membrane potential. And we have talked about the resting membrane potential in details. What is resting membrane potential? How we reach the resting membrane potential of minus 70 to sometimes minus 90 millivolt. We have seen that. And I strongly want you to understand this mechanism before understanding the action potential. Because to understand action potential, you need to know what resting membrane potential is. It is uh, the voltage gradient across the cell membrane when the membrane is not under influence of any ligand or chemical for influence uh, or any other influence of any ligand or voltage influence. That means the cell is not conducting any impulse. But let's consider our nerve cells, specific type of cells in the body, which can be excited. Not all our cells can be excited like the nerve cells. You cannot excite your skin cells as the nerve cells. But the nerve cells have specific structures made for the purpose of being influenced by a voltage, influenced by chemical signaling molecules. Due to that influence, the nerve cells can relay a signal from one part of the body to the other part of the body. And it helps us for reflex actions. So, the nerve impulse is possible due to the presence of action potential, origin of action potential or change from the resting membrane potential. So the value of resting membrane potential that is minus 70 to minus 90 millivolt alters to a much higher positive value to plus 40 plus 50 millivolts. And then again voltage drops. Why this change in voltage seen and how it is done that is what we will understand today in the uh, section of action membrane potential or membrane action potential. So let me write it here. We are going to talk about action potential of membrane. Okay. And when I say action potential, in this case, we are going to talk about how exactly action potential is originated and the different segments of action potential and uh, what are the uh, ion channels that are involved and the sequential events that are involved. So in action membrane potential, uh, before that we know the resting membrane potential. So the resting potential, remember, the resting potential is near about minus 70 millivolts to minus 90 millivolts. Like uh, these nerve cells, they have slightly lower, that is minus 90 millivolt. In other cases, minus 70 millivolts. That is resting potential. In the resting membrane potential, why resting membrane potential is originated? Please uh, rewatch that lecture. But for a summary, I can tell you, it is created because more potassium leaky channels are present than sodium leaky channels. As a result, net movement of potassium out and net movement of sodium in uh, is changed. So more potassium goes out than uh, the sodium goes in. Due to this tussle, as a result, we have a net charge difference that is inside of the cytosol region of the cell we have minus charge and outside of the cell we have plus charge. This is the state of a membrane in the resting state. The cytosolic side of the membrane is negatively charged and outside of the cell that is positively charged. Cytosol negatively charged. Okay, But there is no involvement of any negatively charged ions. There are always involvement of positive charge ions like sodium and potassium in uh, establishing the resting membrane potential in establishing action potential. This should be very clear. Now in case of uh, this resting membrane, uh, I mean action potential, we will also see the involvement of uh, gated channels. Gated channels. So what are gated channels? I already talked about gated channels in my earlier uh, lecture regarding resting membrane potential. Gated channels means there are channel proteins which are embedded in the membrane, transmembrane proteins, but they are closed and they are generally closed but they will open up when either there is a binding of specific ligand or change in voltage. So if the voltage alters then those, chains, uh, those channels suddenly opens up or if there is a specific ligand binding to it 
those channels suddenly opens up okay and whenever the channels will open uh, they will initiate the transport of ions across the membrane and that can change the membrane potential right so membrane potential here started from minus 70 millivolts so so for that i'll give you this this uh, small summary table in here and in this summary table what i'll talk about are the different stages so four major stages we are going to talk about here one is the resting state then the initiation state Uh, that is the depolarization then repolarization and then balancing state these are the four different steps of an action potential the resting membrane potential state the depolarization state the repolarization state and balancing state okay sorry so these are the steps that are out there so let's talk about it so what we know now here is that i'll draw this membrane and what goes on in this membrane is very very important to understand and this is the same membrane we are looking at the movement of action potential from one side of the membrane to the other terminal side of the membrane so the action potential is a unidirectional so it has a unidirectional flow it will move only in one direction in this case the directionality is from left to uh, right right Uh, sorry from uh, right to left in my case is from right to left in as per this picture so what we can clearly see at this moment is that at the very beginning we have minus charge here this is resting state minus inside plus outside clear we know this is resting state now what happen is that let's say this is a channel i'll draw a channel sodium channel the sodium channel was ligand gated so when a sudden ligand binds to this channel a ligand bind to the channel this channel opens up and as this channel opens up we know it will bring what it will bring sodium there are more sodium present outside and this is another concept that we discussed earlier sodium ion concentration is always higher outside of the cell potassium concentration is always higher inside of the cell so when this uh, ligand binds to the sodium channel sodium channel opens up and sodium ions start to move inside of uh, inside the cell so this movement begins as this movement begins temporarily the cytosolic side they start to be little plus now once the voltage alters a little bit now this is a very important a crucial time once the voltage alters a little bit near about like the voltage start to increase from minus 70 millivolts to somewhere minus 50 minus 55 that that area minus 55 and all beyond that limit if the voltage crosses then there are voltage gated sodium channels nearby remember voltage gated sodium channels these are voltage gated sodium channels and this voltage gated sodium channels will also open due to the change in voltage earlier the voltage was minus 70 so they are closed once it reaches minus 55 minus 50 that threshold that is known as a threshold once that threshold is broken then what will happen voltage gated sodium channels open up and more and more sodium ions are transported inside as a result that part cytosolic side of the membrane will become very positive okay so compared to the outside of the membrane so this is a reversal of the resting membrane potential in resting potential more negative inside positive outside in this action potential more positive inside negative outside this is done so first what happened with the resting membrane potential it was minus 70 millivolt now at this moment when sodium start to flow inside more and more sodium start flowing inside this step is known as repolar depolarization stage because earlier there was a polarization now it is depolarization stage in depolarization state it reaches minus okay 90 so from minus 70 minus 90 it will reach what it will reach near about let me say it will reach plus 30 plus 40 millivolt so from minus 70 to 0 then crossing 0 plus 10 20 30 40 so plus 40 so it's huge depolarization that is seen that is visible here and this process continues because the moment voltage crosses that threshold more and more voltage gated sodium channels opens up a lot of sodium in flux we are going to see this sodium influx inside the cell in the cytosol 
as a result it overshoots this is overshooting so depolarization is done and once this depolarization is done is overshooting is done the voltage reaches somewhere plus 30 plus 40 that millivolt range then a separate set of membrane uh, channel proteins potassium channel voltage gated potassium channel here this potassium channels will open up because now we need to restore the balance so this potassium channel opens up and what the potassium channels will do is it will take potassium ions which are more inside the cell they are trying to take more and more potassium from the cell put it outside so more potassium is transported outside so potassium efflux is done and this potassium efflux is very important because that will repolarize the membrane that will repolarize it to somewhere you know near minus 70 millivolt again and that is very very important repolarization is important to uh, shift the membrane potential back to the earliest resting membrane potential configuration so repolarization is done due to the opening of potassium channels so potassium efflux so potassium efflux sodium influx causes depolarization and potassium efflux does a repolarization okay so once potassium start to be pumped out then what happens at the end again plus outside minus inside and if after all this sodium and potassium movement at the end we need to maintain sodium at higher concentration in outside of the cell potassium at higher concentration in inside of the cell and due to this process of action potential generations you know ligand binding voltage gated channel sodium opens voltage gated potassium channel opens so once this process continues and once the voltage gated potassium channel opens the voltage gated sodium channel closes it's not likely that all of them are doing uh, everything at the same time no it's a sequential events so first ligand binds the ligand gated sodium channel opens up sodium comes inside then once depolarization is received voltage gated sodium channels open up that continues the overshooting process once that is done then potassium channel opens up potassium channel once opened the sodium channels closes that is very very important keep that in your mind okay and now after all this the resting membrane potential is again maintained at the end you can see it's maintained at the end starting from the same plus more outside uh, negative inside end in again plus outside negative inside whatever thing happens in the middle stays in the middle but at the end we need to maintain more sodium concentration outside more potassium concentration inside and who does that obviously uh, our beloved sodium potassium atpase pump via active transport again takes three sodium out and two potassium inside of the cell thus maintaining or balancing sodium potassium so this is sodium potassium atpase pump and the role of this pump is to balance the sodium and potassium concentration across the cell membrane without this sodium potassium atpase pump we can never we can't maintain the sodium potassium levels across the membrane so the sodium potassium pump plays a vital role in resting membrane potential and also originating and balancing the sodium and potassium concentration in a uh, action membrane potential keep this in your mind write it down and there is one term that i want to tell you absolute refractory period a r p absolute refractory period what is this term this is a term or a or a time frame between which two consecutive action potential cannot be originated because a moment a membrane gets excited somehow it should complete that process it's an all or none event remember it's an all or none event so it's not likely the action potential started with 5% 10% 20% or 80% efficiency no action potential will either continue or it will not continue it's all or none event and once the action potential begins here at this moment you see that once the action potential begins 
then there is no going back. And the moment the action potential begins, from that start point, the voltage to get normal again. So starting from the resting potential, ending in the resting potential. Until it reaches that time. So the time that is taken to reach between this resting potential stages, no two consecutive action potential will be allowed. Only one action potential is allowed. So that time frame between which no consecutive action potential is allowed, you know, is absolute refractory period. Okay, absolute refractory period. So if we excite a membrane lesser than the absolute refractory period time, the membrane will not show any sort of action potential. A membrane will show action potential only when the time gap that we apply the stimuli is beyond absolute refractory period keep this in your mind and the same thing of this graph uh, of the table that i that i uh, draw here can be represented in a graph okay so let me draw the graph time in the x axis and we have voltage in the y axis and the easy way to draw it something like this so i'll put it zero here uh, the values, let's see, this is minus 70 millivolt. And let's say this is plus 40 millivolt. Okay. The voltage is in millivolt here. Okay. Alexa, stop. So, if this is our graph, minus 70, and so, so till minus 100, uh, let's say till plus 100 here, and we have minus 100 here, for example. So what we can see is that the graph, how the graph is going to look like, it starts with this minus 70 millivolt here. This is the resting potential. Sorry. This is the resting potential and it increases to 40 millivolt, then start dropping, further drop below 70, then come back to 70 millivolt. So this is sort of a graph that we are going to see. Okay, this is sort of a graph. And we have this as a depolarization and we have this as a repolarization. And this is resting membrane potential. This was resting membrane potential. Starting from resting membrane potential, ending in resting membrane potential. In the middle, we have depolarization, which is done due to the opening of sodium channels, voltage gated sodium. First ligand gated sodium channels, then voltage gated sodium channels. In sequence, if I say, uh, then this is first ligand gated sodium channels and the second reason voltage gated sodium channels cause this and while repolarization is caused due to what voltage gated potassium channels due to the opening of voltage gated potassium channels okay and then again this balancing is done by sodium potassium ATPAs pump clear so this is a overall idea about the action membrane potential. I believe you have a clear idea about it. This is a topic which you should not mug up. You should understand. And once you understand this, it becomes very clear. Without understanding this topic, without understanding uh, this action potential, you cannot understand intrinsic conduction system of the heart because that works based on this mechanism. Okay. So this is how the nerve impulse is triggered. So if we look at the axons, so let's say then right structure if I draw like this and if I draw structure of axons like this at the end. So these axons, throughout these axons, you know, uh, we can clearly find out uh, this action potential originated like this, then plus inside, minus outside. So this process is originating in the axon, it can easily spread across the axon of the nerve okay and this impulse is triggered due to the release of neurotransmitters like acetylcholine okay uh, impact of this ligand causes the initiation of the nerve impulse and the impulse can be transferred from the uh, body of the nerve through the axon to the axon terminal quite easy so this is all about action potential if you like this video please hit the like button share this video to your friends subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.